So welcome everybody to this latest video on 162 maths and in this video we'll be doing an AQA GCSE maths foundation topic test around basic probability. Now as always you can download a copy of the test by clicking on the link in the description below which I recommend that you do either before watching this video or while watching this video as we go through the answers. So before we get started it's worth mentioning that there's no indication about whether these questions are specific to a non-calculator or a calculator paper so what we'll do is we'll just make sure that we show full working out and obviously and treat each question as a non-calculator question if it's a calculator question then obviously working out would be simpler so let's get started on question one so it says that there are 50 pence in a drawer 50 in a blue four are green and the rest are black a pen is chosen at random work out the probability that it is black so for this, what we need to do first is to subtract all of the pens that we know. So 15 and 4 from the total. So we've got 50 minus 15 minus 4. And that gives me an answer of 31. So that means that there are 31 black pens. And the question is asking for the probability. So the probability is going to be 31 over the total number of pens, which is 50. Then we just need to check can that simplify no it can't so that there is our final answer moving on to question two it says i should collect 1p coins and 2p coins 24 of these are 1p coins the probability of choosing a 2p coin at random is a half how much money does she have in total now if the probability of choosing a 2p coin is going to be a half then that basically means that she's going to have the same number of 1p coins as 2p coins and if she's got 24 1p coins so 24 1p coins that's going to equal 24 pence and if she's got 24 2 pence coins then that's going to be 48 pence so the question is then asking what's the total amount so all i need to do is just Add those two numbers up, in which I get an answer of 72 pence. Moving on to question three, it says that a game is played with a fair spinner. The spinner is spun twice, and two numbers are and the two numbers are added to make a score. And what we need to do is complete this table to show all the possible scores. So for this, we just need to add up the column number and the the uh, row number. That becomes four, five, six. No, it doesn't and that completely wrong because let me just correct that so we've got two four five eight and we've got four six seven ten and then we've got five seven eight and eleven and then finally eight ten eleven and fourteen it then says you win if your score is an even number Keisha says that only one in four numbers on the spinner is an even, so I'm unlikely to win. Is she correct? And we need to give our reason for doing so. So let's first of all highlight the winning numbers. So the winning numbers are when they are even. So that's going to be a winning number. That is, 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 that is. So here what we've got is the probability of winning is going to be if we add up all those circled numbers we get 10 out of a total number of 16 which simplifies to give me 5 over 8 so here as 5 over 8 is greater than a half that no Keisha uh, is incorrect or I should say not no because that would be a double negative so here then we could say Keisha is incorrect as 5 eighths is greater or you could use the inequality symbol than a half in other words you've got more chance there are more circled numbers than there are uncircled numbers and again you could even write that and that'll be fine to get you the second explanation mark so then moving on to question four, it says that a box contains counters that are red, blue, yellow, or green. The table shows some information about picking a counter at random, and the first part asks for the probability of picking a red counter. Now, when you've got a table, what you need to make sure is that all of those probabilities need to add up 
to 1.0. So to find this missing number, and let's just do that in red. So to find this number, all I need to do is do one take away then all the other decimal numbers in the table. So 0 0.25 minus 0 0.35 minus 0 0.3. And then I should have an answer of 0 0.1. And I'll just write that in the answer box as well. It then says that Jamie says that there are 70 counters in total. How show how you know he must be wrong. Now, again, a couple of explanations for this. I'll just try and have the numbers on the scale. So here he can't be wrong or he has to or he must be wrong in terms of there being 70. And then one of the reasons for is because if a quarter of the counters is blue, you cannot divide 70 by four. So basically you can't do a quarter of 70 and end up with a whole number. And something along those lines in your explanation will be enough for that single mark. Moving on to question five, it says that uh, Temi rolls two fair six sided dice. The two numbers rolled are added to give a total. Work out the probability that the total is a single digit prime number. Now again, I would probably say that the encouraging would encourage you to do a sample space diagram. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Excuse the neatness of this table. Uh, so two, three, four, five, six, seven, three, four, eight. So once you've completed that sample space diagram, the next thing we then need to do is to highlight all the single prime numbers or single digit prime numbers. So here we've got two, three, three, five is our next one. Seven is the next set. Eight is not prime. Nine is not prime. Ten is not prime. 11 is prime, but it's double digit, so we don't want that, and so that leaves us there. So if I count up all the circled numbers, I find that there are 13, so it's going to be 13 out of a total of 36. Can that be simplified? No, it can't, so there is my final answer. Now, where the three marks would come from is one mark would be from drawing the sample space diagram, another mark will be counting how many single digit prime numbers there are, and then the third mark will come from you writing probability in its simplest form. Moving on to question six, it says that 84 people take a driving test, a quarter are men. For the men, the ratio of pass to fail is five to two. The number of women who pass is double the number of women who fail. So what we need to do is we need to use this information to complete our frequency tree. Now, let me just zoom out a little bit and typically it resets. So let's just get back to the question and let's work through this. So looking at the first one, we've got 84 people and a quarter are men. So if I then work out a quarter of 84, I work that to be 21. So that's all 84 divided by 4 equals 21. So there are 21 men. So therefore, to work out the women, all I've got to do there is 84 minus 21, which gives me an answer of 63. It then says, so using the second bit of information, so let's change this. So for the men, the ratio of pass to fail is 5 over 2. So let me just do that over here. So here we've got a total of 21, and I've got a ratio of 5 to 2 pass to fail. So if I do 21 divided by 7, which equals 3, multiply both those numbers by 3, in which I get 15 and 6. So this is going to be 15. And this is going to be six. Now, the next one then says the number of women who pass is double the number of women who fail. So here, if we look at the third bit to work out this, then here we've got a total of 63. And the total number of females who pass 
is double. So pass is going to be two and fail is going to be one. So here I'm doing 63 divided by three, which is 21. So if I multiply that by 21 and one by 21, I'll work out these missing numbers, which is 42 and 21. And there I've completed my frequency tree. Then moving on to 6b, it says one of the people uh, is chosen at random. Work out the probability that it is a woman who passes. Give your answer as a fraction in its simplest form. So the number of women who pass is going to be this number here. So that's going to be 42 over a total of 84. And we can simplify that as a fraction as being a half.